Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is Christ is Alive. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Praise God. Thank you, Elora. Last week, we had our communion. Do you remember last week, those that were here? Um, it seemed like a, an extra special um, experience talking to some of you afterwards. I just, um, I was just really blessed um, immensely by, by that, that experience. And um, I'm bringing this up now is because last week, we, we reflected on um, Jesus dying on the cross. Um, that's basically what the communion is. He gives us his, his body and his blood for us. And we, 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 we focus on um, the incredible sacrifice. Um, today we're going to talk more about his resurrection. And so let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful moment with you. We are in your presence right now, Lord. Um, and we pray that your Holy Spirit speaks to us in, in a special way. Um, may we reflect on everything that you've done for us. May we hear it as we talk about your son's um, resurrection. May we hear it like we've heard it for the first time. Um, and may we be changed by it. Guide us now. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Something also, in your bulletin, there's a card. Do you guys see that card? Um, if you don't have a card, uh, there is a, um, there's, there's in, the, in the pews, there are response cards. You can have one of those. I want you to hold on to those cards. You don't have to respond to it right now, but I want you to hold on to it um, because there, there's a time in our service where, where you can um, make a response for that. Uh, just, just be aware of that. So, uh, Jesus had just died on the cross. Um, um, on Wednesday night, we went through um, the cross, in, and we we just wrestled with this, and we 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 saw like how everybody knew this was the Messiah, but they turned their hearts cold and rejected him. And we realized that, you know, we see him on the cross. And we were talking about how the soldiers, we look at the soldiers, and they are mocking him and, and sparing him and putting the thorns on him. And every time we read that, I read that, I put my name on it. Like, this is what I've done to Jesus. He's on the cross because of me. But, and he did it because he loved us. He, he, he wanted to be there for me, for us. And so, thankfully, the story doesn't end there, which leads us to Christ is alive. And starting in Matthew 28, 1 through 2, it says, After the Sabbath at dawn, and on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, and, and for, an, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stones and sat on it. We have this moment where the people, the followers of Jesus are in a great despair. And then um, this, this awakening happens. Then it says, 
This is the angel. His appearance was, light, was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So there's something spectacular. How many of you have seen an angel? Um, uh, you know, this is, this is, this is a, we have an earthquake. We have angels. Something is happening. And the soldiers there are, are, are afraid of this moment in time. And the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Praise God, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. I heard this story where this lady got a phone call. Um, it was during Gulf War, 1990, the first one. Um, and he got, she got a phone call, one that every mother um, wishes would never happen, that her son had died in the war. And, he, and she just, um, she went through incredible amounts of grieving for, for this time. Um, you know, what can you expect? imagine can you imagine a phone call your son is dead in war you don't want it to happen but you and, and so she's going through this incredible amounts of anxiety and and just pain and like why why is this happening to to me how could it happen to my son and just 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 the three days later she gets a phone call and it was his, her son. It was the wrong person that died. So we look at this and we see that three days later, right? Jesus died on the cross three days later. He, he arose, right? He is risen. Just the, um, the emotional experiences that they were going through. Christ has risen. It was Completely life-changing. That is, you know, there's no way to explain that, right? Changing their life, his, their lives. So, oh, and then in Matthew 27, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and, and, and is going ahead of, of, of you into Galilee. There you will see him. So they have this experience and they need to go and tell people this. I have a question for you. Um, can you think of an event that changed your life forever? Um, I don't mean it, you know, some of us have had hard events that have changed our lives. Some of it, some of us had good experiences. Some of us have many different experiences that change my, your lives forever. I remember one day I got mugged. Someone stuck a knife to my throat for my Pizza Hut pizza because I was a pizza man delivery. Right? That was scary. The, the, you know, for a long time, that, cer that day I had a veggie lover's pizza. I ate a giant veggie. I was so scared <laughs> and shocked. And I ate this veggie lover's pizza, extra large one, all by myself, right? And, and I, you know what? The next day I was ready to work. I show up and then I quit. I said, I can't do this anymore, right? That was life changing. I remember that a couple of weeks later, I was walking, and it was at night, and I heard footsteps coming behind me, right? And it was coming faster and faster, right? And I was, I was getting really freaked out. And I looked, all right, right when it got closer and closer up to me, I go, ah! And I, it was a jogger, right, just jogging. And that person jumped a mile. I mean, jumped all the way across the other side. Because <laughs> I was so messed up by that 
life-changing event. He had his own life-changing event then. <laughs> <laughs> life-changing events. Maybe like when I got married, that's a life-changing event. When I had Johanna, when she was first born, I just had this, I just weeped, right? Um, we all have our stories of life-changing events. But I hope this is included into one of your life-changing events. Jesus has risen. Because it may be the greatest, it should be the greatest life-changing event of your entire life. It has changed the way we view many things about life. It changed the way we view sin, for example. Um, Romans 5, 8 says, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, some of us may feel like we're just bad people, right? I can't do anything right. I just make mistakes. I just constantly do dumb things. We feel that way. Um, you know, it, there's this self-esteem sense. We just don't feel like we're worth anything. Does anybody feel that way? God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, he died for us. He didn't die for those that got it all together, right? He didn't die for the righteous. He died for the sinners, right? So the way we view sin is changes in the sense that, one, you know, our negatives, he turns into positives. So we don't have to, to to stay where we're at. We don't have to, to, to look at ourselves as, as, as worthless because God, he loved us so much. All the mistakes you've made in your life, he loves you so much that he came for you for this reason. You know, it, it, like if you had a, everything together and everything perfect and everything right and someone does you know God saves you you may not feel like you need saving right so it changes the way we view sin one, we can recognize that we are all sinners. We don't have to pretend like we're not sinners. We are all sinners. Sometimes we do that. We go to church in our Sabbath best and we act like everything's fine and we, we look like we have it all together. But we don't, we don't have to pretend. We are all sinners. The person next to you is just as messed up as you in one way or another. <laughs> but praise God, he is, she or he is just as saved as you too, right? So let us remember this. It's changed the way we view sin. Next, it changed our view of death. Today we sang a beautiful song that had this, these verses. This thing's battery's dead. Um, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to glory, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear death anymore, because Jesus claimed victory over death. You know, that is very important to know, especially when you're on your deathbed. You know, I've seen that many times, people that of faith and the way they react to death than people that don't. When you believe that you are going to live again, you, your experience, you have, you have peace 
at the end of time. But when you feel like it's the finality of it, that you will never exist anymore in life again, you deal with incredible amounts of fear. Right? Incredible amounts of fear. We don't have to fear death. Doesn't mean you should go 200 miles per hour on a motorcycle without a helmet, Bill. Um, (laughs) And the, the beauty of it is, you know, people think the worst thing something can happen to someone is dying. You could take, you, you know, there, there's, God, there's, in this world, when you believe in what Jesus has done, nothing can do, nobody can do anything to you. They could kill you, but guess what? You still have life, right? Switch means this last part is God changes our view of life. One of the ways, one of the things we see is, um, um, you know, our view of sin, that we are worthless without God, whatever. But Jesus died for us. So, So our view of sin is changed. But then our view of death Okay, we can live um, thinking we, we don't have to fear death. But now, what now? What's today? Knowing that Jesus had died on the cross, he died for our sins, and he had resurrected, how does that impact you right now, today? How does that change you today? It changes our view of life. It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord. Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Today, now is the time to look at your cards. The cross, the grave, it's changed everything. It's changed this world. Two billion people have claimed Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. They're currently living right now. It's changed our view of of who we are. We are sinners, but we are, we are children of God. The king of the universe came onto this earth for you. It changes the way we look at our lives. I pray that, it, that you see that. You, you f- know without Jesus, there is nothing. And this weekend is the, is the weekend, the once a year weekend, we reflect on this incredible sacrifice that he's made for you and me. 
If you believe God has changed everything for you, or you want, desire for God to change everything for you, here's an opportunity to, to make that declaration. You have a card in your hand. If you'd like to come forward, you can. And with it, you have this verse, a gift that God gives you. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again. Living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If you believe Jesus has changed everything for you, you can come forward now. Like I mentioned before, it's something that you can't um, manufacture it yourself. Um, we talked about this in Sabbath school earlier, that this thing, experience with God, um, comes from God. Um, all you have to do is be open to it. Open to, say, Lord, please um, come into my heart. And the thing, the promise is that he says that um, he will give us what we ask. Ask and you shall receive. He promises to come into heart. I don't care, or better, more importantly, he doesn't care what you have done in your life. If you ask him into your heart, he will come in. And when he does, like I've been saying, he changes everything. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this moment, this time with you. Thank you, Father, for what this weekend reflects, what it means. We see your son come on this earth, minister to your children. We see humanity, we see ourselves responding to you and rejecting you in such a horrible way that puts your son on a cross to experience a terrible death. All because of our sinfulness. And we see your son's willingness to do this only because of the love that he has for us, for me, Lord. Thank you, God. And then we also see your son rise from the grave and to know that our sinfulness, it's not hopeless, that we have victory and we understand why Lord, what you have done. Hallelujah.
Praise God. And then we see your son spending time with your children and then going, ascending in heaven to someday coming again. And Lord, we can't wait for the day he comes back. Thank you, Father. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.